The anime begins with a guy called Bai. He's the dumbest white-haired loser on earth and is the only person of this realm who is still stuck on the same level one and he's been stuck there for over 3,000 years just like a disgusting new. And he's desperate to find a breakthrough in this world of magic to prove he's worthy. In this world, there are different realms, and we see that Bai was in the Establishment Foundation realm when he was still a kid. 3,000 years later, there was an attack on the Sword Sect realm by Thunder Beasts, and one of the clan members thought he could take out all of the beasts alone like Naruto. But the poor loser just got isekai to hell with a lightning bolt. Multiple people die within seconds as they are struck by lightning. Just then, the King Ming Sword Sect leader, named Yunzi, appears and fights the beasts. With his ultimate skills he thought he could solo the entire pack of beasts, but he wet his pants the moment he saw how many there were. Yunzi realizes that the beasts are very powerful after he assesses the damage they have caused, and he orders all of his men to attack just so he could protect his sorry ass. Meanwhile, a person is seen watching and enjoying the fight from a tree, giving off a smirky smile. Elsewhere, the loser Bai was working on his powers in the Kai Refining Realm establishment, and he demonstrates his immense power that actually reaches the sky. However, it soon dies down and from the enormous hole in the sky falls down a huge wave of water. After he was left gasping for air and catching his breath, he gets angry at the immortals because 3,000 years have passed and he still has not reached the Foundation Establishment Realm. Bai steps out and hears loud noises coming from the bottom of the hill, and Yunzi realizes that they cannot fight all of them, so he sends someone to fetch Bai from Mount Seven Star. However, he meets him midway as Bai uses a cableway since he cannot fly. He seems irritated at the sight of him flying. Bai takes his sword and jumps down, leaving him stranded. Just when everyone is tired of fighting, a whistle forces the Thunder Beasts to fall back. At that moment, a man emerges from the smoke and Yunzi recognizes him as the supreme elder of the demon sect, Hyung Fu Feng. He reveals that he passed the test of immortality and now wants to improve himself further, so he commands to battle the Swordmaster. But Yunzi refuses as Bai is focusing on cultivation and retreat. Hyung Fu reveals how he sent the beasts first, which angers Yunzi and causes him to attack. But he falls back as the demon demonstrates great power. Just then, Bai made an epic landing, causing severe damage to the land. The demon leaves no chance to show off, making him insecure of his powers. He refuses to fight Hyung Fu as there is no point, but Bai is baffled at how a demon is also in the Great Realm when he isn't. However, his insults make him angry so he decides to fight him. They both wreak chaos as they duel. Surprisingly, his attacks are so swift that they send Hyung Fu flying. He is no match for Bai, despite passing the immortal test. Yunzi faints seeing the damage the two have caused, mainly Bai since he defeated Hyun Fu. However, instead of being angry, he asks Bai to train him, but is immediately rejected. Since Bai can't even fly in the Kai refining realm, he has to eat pills to prolong his life. But Hyun Fu tells Bai that he knows the secret to his foundation establishment realm. This intrigues Bai and he grabs his arm, offering him to come along. He doesn't know what the secret is but he just got it from someone in the blessed sect who told him to give it to Bai. However, Yunzi is petrified because of the loss and the cost to repair it. Bai gives Hyung Fu a death stare, so he promises to pay double for all the damages. Only then, Yunzi agrees to translate the secret paper for Bai. Just when he is offering tribute, he is spooked by someone, and it turns out to be Zhu Ling from the Hades realm who is apparently a ghost. He asks him to give up since it's been 3,000 years, but he is determined, even if he has to eat a pill every 50 years to prolong his life. The ghost is promised a promotion if he takes Bai to the ghost world. He challenges him that if he wins in a fight against him, he is taking him from the land of living. Yunzi is seen praying but Bai tells him it is useless since he has been doing it for 3,000 years now. So he gives him the herbs he ordered, and then tells him to repair his roof since it got damaged when he was fighting with Zhu Leng. After that, he sends him flying out the roof, and shows off his transformation skills to Yunzi as he turns into a girl. So Yunzi then goes on to find the Celestial Heart Herb for Bai. After a while, Bai throws up when he is dropped off on a flying sword, and he is now even more determined to reach the foundation level so he can fly. Just then, a bunch of strong men hide when they see Bai approaching. They are surprised when they see he is not scared of them. Just when they are about to attack him, they are kicked off and sent flying by a boy. The boy defeats them all leaving them extremely wounded, and then tells Bai that he is on his way to kill demons. This intrigues him so he decides to follow the boy. Later, they end up in a creepy dark cave, which is covered in green goo. The demon attacks the boy but he quickly dodges it and slices it in half. However, a whole lot of them emerge which makes it difficult for the boy to fight them all. So he runs away killing as many as he can, 
As he heads to the entrance, he is blocked by a giant demon. Just as he was being held down by the demon, someone blew his head off. Turns out, it was Bai who cheerfully greeted him. After that, he finishes them all off using his sword swiftly. The little boy is impressed by this, but doesn't show it too clearly. The boy seems angry with the cultivators, and blames them for messing up the court of Shangshuan Kingdom. The boy introduces himself as Tang Wai and asks Bai to come with him to the kingdom, so that he can help kill demons and save the people and he even promises him rich and fame, but he says to only treat him to dinner. Tang constantly stops by from eating since the food may be bewitched or drugged by the witches who run the Delight House. Just then, a woman enters whose name is Su Ziangsu. She is the leader of the Blessed Sect and the same woman who gave the secret to Huang Fu so that he could give it to Bai. So he tries to stabilize the situation between the two. Su says that it is not the first time that she has been framed for the rise of demons. After the boy leaves, Su tries to by but he is flustered and leaves in a hurry. In a change of scene, Bai is told all the herbs have been sold and bought by officers. He overhears two officers talking about the boy of the Lai family who is weak. Just when the officers are leaving, a child approaches them asking for food. But they don't know that the child is Bai who has transformed. Preparations are underway for the worship ceremony in the Shangshuan kingdom. The grand master of this kingdom, Sima, is standing by the king while another man is painting. His painting is inappropriate to say the least. As the king tries on the robe, Sima tells him that it must be changed as it needs to be perfect. So the king orders to summon more manpower from the kingdom. So the two workers leave worried and irritated with Sima who is brainwashing the king. However, they stop midway once they see that the eldest princess, Tang Rue is in their way. Somewhere else, Bai has been spying on the palace and is shocked to see the resemblance between the princess and the little boy he met. The princess is convincing her father to not hold the worship ceremony, as it has never turned out well. But the king is madly in love with Su, and he tells the princess to marry Sima to which she gets angry and points at him for being a cultivator who has ulterior motives. Sima offers Rue a rose but she throws it away. However, her finger is pricked but she waves off her finger causing to spill her blood. After she leaves, he extracts the blood from the rose. Around nighttime, Bai is seen escaping the guards in his true form, and enters the imperial tombs. After that, he searches through the tombs and takes different items such as the night pearl. He then sees the snake ball sword but the moment he picks it up, he is attacked by multiple arrows. Just then, someone pulls him in from the secret wall. When he looks up to see, he finds the little boy from before, Tang Wai. They are both shocked to see each other. He tells Bai that the Imperial Tombs are somehow connected with the recent occurrence of zombies. They both head up the stairs to a giant luxurious door. Upon opening it, they see another tomb which is the coffin of the founding emperor. But the scary part is that it is a hundred years old, yet it is still so clean. They both look down to see red patterns forming around them. Bai says that it's a bloodthirsty array and it is unsafe so they must escape but he doesn't listen and tries to burn the coffin since he wants to save his kingdom. Bai confirms his suspicion that he is actually a princess, but she denies it saying I am man. He forcefully feeds her the night pearl which puts her in deep sleep. In a change of scene, they are back at the delight house where the princess is tied up, and the other two are discussing how to break the array. She is going crazy hearing their suggestions when she finally breaks free and shouts at them for planning to hurt her father. It is revealed she is indeed the princess and has a conversation with Su. Su reveals a scar on her back, shocking the princess. In a change of scene, Su calls Bai back in to find the princess crying but she agrees to their plan. The next day, Wei makes her crying father promise to not interfere in her marriage choice or else she will make Su leave the kingdom, to which he happily agrees. We see that Su tells the princess her life story, that she is a child of a human and a monster king. Thousands of years ago a war between humans and monsters broke out, but the mo result she was born. He then tried to harm her too though she was his daughter. He said she shouldn't have been born. He inflicted his wrath upon them, and as a result her mother sacrificed herself for Sue. After that, Sue was the only one of his children who fully inherited his monster bloodline, which is why the monster king wants her back in the monster realm. In a change of scene, the kids are lined up on coffins, among them is Bai hiding in pure disguise. Once the guards leave, he transforms into his true self, and he sprinkles some dust on the kids to wake them up. Meanwhile, the people of the kingdom have gathered for the worship ceremony, and Sima steps up and inaugurates the ceremony. With one tap on the ground, a staircase emerges from the ground but nothing shows up, as the kids are gone. Instead they come out awake and start cheering on the bride, just then Sue shows up causing confusion everywhere. She then proposes to the king and strictly tells the Grand Master Sima to inform the monster king that she is not going back, 
Bai transforms in front of everyone which gives Sima a shock. However, he flies up and his true face is revealed as his mask wears off. He turned out to be a tree monster who wanted to take Su back, but seeing Bai has enraged him. The king faints as he sees the scene unfold. The grandmaster is actually Kuiluo and he has a spider-like figure. The truth is that Bai killed his mother which is why he is angry at him and wants revenge. Kuiluo continues to attack him even when Su has interfered. They both engage in a vicious fight but the outcome is hilarious as he carves furniture out of him and turns him into a chair. He then reveals that the bloodthirsty array won't stop. Just then, a huge red rose emerges from the ground. It was the princess's blood that activated the array which means that she has inherited the bloodline of Dragon Ball. Blood spreads through the entire place causing people pain and sucking their blood from them. The princess is the only one who can break the array but she may die in the process. She goes down to break it off, but finds her ancestor standing on his tomb. She is angry at him and asks if he caused the zombie chaos to which he agrees happily. She then slits her hand with a knife causing blood to drip, which she uses to stop the array. But the stupid old man sucks the energy out of her, and the light from the array dims and Bai jumps right in to catch her. Just then, the man exerts power as the bloodline of the Dragon Ball has led him to the Golden Pill Realm. The man goes flying into a wall with one blow from Bai. He then throws him up in the sky and then kicks him right back down. He is fierce and extremely violent with him as he throws him around, using all sorts of skills such as spatial, sword and array. Bai ends up breaking every bone in the man's body and throws him back to his coffin. He then picks up bridal style as she gives him a thumbs up and brings her up. While Su heals her, she tells Bai to burn the imperial tombs. And then with one flick of a burnt paper, he burns it all. A flashback of Bai as a kid is shown, where he is in some ruins surrounded by dead demons. Just then a man appears from the sky, lending his hand to Bai and asking him to follow on the path of cultivation. In the present time, his ghost friend Ling appears. Bai blames him for not taking away the souls. After that, Ling jumps down to take the souls who were bound by the blood array. Su arrives to say that Wei will be fine thanks to her blood of snake ball and we see that Wei tasted it to find that there isn't much special about it. Su explained the legend where a goddess and the immortal snake fell in love and gave birth to a daughter. This means Wei's blood is precious and must be kept a secret since revealing it would put her in danger. Wei then wonders if Bai is really so powerful since he is stuck in the beginner realm. Su explains that Bai is very unique and even though he's in the beginner realm, he is respected by cultivators and demons as the sword master. He keeps the order and if it wasn't for him the entire realm would be in chaos. Elsewhere Ling explains to Bai that being reincarnated isn't so bad and urges him to stop resisting his fate. But he wants an extension on his life as he is not ready to be reincarnated and explains that he is close to breaking through to the next realm. Ling laughs at how Bai has been saying the same thing for 3000 years and points out how there are only 2 days left on his 10 day life extension as he disappears into a portal. Back at the kingdom the emperor expresses his gratitude towards Bai for his help and asks that he take care of his daughter from now on. Bai tries to get out of it but the emperor explains that she just needs to be trained a bit, and their children will be able to protect the kingdom for a long time. Wei points out that she just needs training and not a husband. Bai explains that he can't since he will be traveling a lot, but Wei says she won't be much of a bother. Bai is still hesitant and Wei wonders if he is just afraid that she will surpass him. Their bickering is stopped with a celebration dinner, and the two later find themselves in bed. Bai explains that she is probably better off without him since her blood can make her a target. While traveling later, Bai is fighting a cloaked man and we see that it is actually Ling who is there to explain that Bai's 10-day extension on his life has ended. Bai continues to beg for an extension just then a pearl is thrown into his mouth. Consuming it prolongs his life for another 4 years and 355 days. So Ling must leave. It was thanks to Su but Bai complains about the bitter taste of the medicine. Su becomes upset but Bai explains that the document Fen gave him earlier has probably already been translated and leaves Ling wondering why Su bothers to help Bai so much. But she points out how Ling has always helped him as well. Elsewhere Wei begs Yunzi to have Bai train her but he explains that he doesn't make those decisions. After hearing how she wants to protect her people, he agrees to help convince him, but explains that Bai is training currently and no one dares to bother him. Yunzi then explains that there might be a way to see him though and states how they have recently been attacked by thunder beasts, and the repairs have left them with little money and hints at how her buying something to take to him would help her cause. So Wei agrees to send over a large sum. The next day, Yandi gladly gives her a ride up the mountain by his anoint to see Wei, and demands that all the elders leave since they're just there to hear gossip. 
Wei explains that they were carrying gifts for him but he only cares about the partially translated document that Yunzi has brought. Bai asks that he leave but is surprised to see that he has left Wei. That night Bai explains that students will arrive the next day to take her down the mountain, but she states that she wants to stay and be a student. Bai then turns his attention to the document but notices that the translation is just as hard to read as the original. However, it turns out that Wei has experienced interpreting inscriptions and he asks her to translate the rest. But he is impatient with her though, and she says that she might as well just go back to being an idle princess. Before she can leave, Bai stops her and agrees to make her a student. Later Bai greets Wei, who he now calls his precious student as she translates the scripture that holds a secret to his potential breakthrough. Bai brings her soup which spills and enrages her, so he returns moments later to find that she has finished the translation. But he can't read her writing so she explains that the writing records the existence of someone referred to as the Land Immortal, who is a person free of life and death. But the writing doesn't say anything about how Bai can reach the next realm, and he can't believe that's all it says and assumes that Huangfu must not have copied everything on the stone scripture, so he decides that he must go copy it himself and then tells Wei to prepare for some training outside. So they wait for the ride and Fang arrives to explain that he rushed there immediately without even changing clothes. First, he is shocked to hear that Bai wants to go to a place called the Great Desolation, since he just came from there. Huangfu explains that he is no idiot, and is sure he copied the stone tablet exactly. But Bai convinces him to go by saying he may find a way for himself to reach a higher realm, and tells Wei that it will be her training. She is now hesitant, since it sounds like a dangerous place, but Bai promises to protect her. However, the journey is a bit long and they encounter several exotic animals along the way, in which one of them is actually quite ferocious. But Huang Fu takes care of it easily as he isn't humble about it or how he passed the Immortal's test. Bai points out that his immortal test was less severe since he has not done much evil, and those that have done worse things have a more difficult test sometimes even resulting in the immortals killing them. They finally arrive at where Huang Fu thinks the tablet was, but there is nothing there except sand. Wei finds a cute set of eyes, but Bai must save her when it turns out to be a vicious monster. Huang Fu kills it but asks Bai to rule in the sand since he now stinks. Wei is injured though, and the blood from her wound activates a spell that reveals the stone tablet. The tablet is much larger than Huang Fu remembers, and Bai asks Wei to begin translating the second she touches the tablet. But an earthquake occurs and an entire city emerges from the ground. The place is quite frightening though, and people can be heard but not seen. Wei mentions how the tablet said something about the land immortal being good at spatial magic, and they assume the voices might be from souls in the Hades realm. Bai wonders if she saw anything about having a breakthrough but she didn't have time to read the rest of the tablet. As they go further into the city, a loud bell can be heard, and Huang Fu points out that their spiritual energy is being taken away. They notice that Bai ended up ahead of them and realize that her low cultivation level had resulted in her being attracted by the bell. He attempts to get Wei to gather her spiritual energy, but she doesn't and Bai decides to counteract the sound with his own sword. It works and he tells Huang Fu to get her away from the sound of the bell. Bai finds a tablet so that he can copy the writing. It's simple enough at first but the tablet starts sinking faster and Bai has to rush. He manages to finish, but Wei has lost most of her spiritual energy, and we see a spell activate as they leave. Back up by his mountain, Huang Fu and Yunzi check to see how well Wei is recovering. Bai emerges to tell them that they are being too loud, and that Wei will make a full recovery since he gave her some of his spiritual energy. Bai hands them a copy of the stone tablet and instructs them to find someone to translate it immediately. Elsewhere one of the orbs released from the spell at the stone tablet traverses some land and enters a tree. A while later, two travelers find that the area where the tree was now has a large building in its place, and a look inside shows a mysterious person in a robe sitting on a throne. Bai and Wei are training by the waterfall, where he demonstrates his spiritual energy, impressing Wei, as the waterfall picks up its speed and is now more intense. He then emphasizes on how spiritual energy requires concentration, so Wei decides to give it a try, but is only able to move a droplet which makes him laugh, but he assures her that it also took him three days and it might take longer for her. However, his eyes almost pop out of his skull when he sees the intensity of her energy on the waterfall. She is even able to make different animal shapes from the water. Somewhere in the forging sect, an old man delivers news to the sect leader named Lion, that a mysterious city has emerged and they are called for backup, since the cultivators from all realms are disappearing when they visit it. In just a little time, Wei has progressed to level 7 of the Kai Refining Realm and asks Bai if she will reach the Foundation Establishment Realm soon. 
Just then, she reaches the 8th level, making Bai even more anxious. When he is done worshipping, she is already at level 9. He asks her to translate again. Elsewhere, the soldiers are fighting and Elder Liu worries that their power has gotten very strong. The reinforcement of beasts drops from the ancient city, causing them to fall back. Just then, a wave radiating from the city makes all the soldiers go crazy. Their eyes turn red and they are now under a spell as they head towards the city, chanting to kill Emperor King and revive the Sheng Dynasty. Suddenly, thousands of arrows are shot in their direction, so Ren casts a barrier. However, Ren was captured and his body was taken as hostage by the evil force in the cloak. Elsewhere, Bai is complaining how Wei has reached the Foundation Establishment Realm in three days, but he has been trying for 3,000 years. But Wei tells him that those who failed to be immortal after breaking through the Great Realm are now immortals on land and are controlling cultivators' minds. Wei informs him that the blood of Dragon Ball can activate the ancient city, which means that they may have activated the land immortals on the day of the worship ceremony. So they head down the hill to meet different leaders from multiple sects, whose troops have also disappeared. Someone from the demon sect shows where the ancient city is on the map. Lion is upset over Ren so they try to comfort him. They all discuss strategies and Bai listens to them. He tells them that the city changes its locations frequently. Just then, Lion begs Bai to help his older brother, Ren as he can feel he is in pain. However, Wei figures out that the city is in the middle of an array. Using a spell, they are finally able to locate it. Everyone reaches the city, which includes the masters and students from various demon sects, who are waiting for Bai as he has gone inside the city. Lion also worries if he can get his brother out, but Huangfu assures him that he has comprehensive strength. However, Su and her student make fun of him for lying and that he let Bai beat him. His student is angry at Huangfu for not introducing her to Bai. So she asks Wei if he will take her in, but her master is upset on hearing this. In a change of scene, Bai is seen walking in the city which is strangely too quiet. Just as he runs, crazy soldiers emerge from the ground and attack him. They are the walk-in disciples, Bai tries to fight them off but there are too many, and he knows they can't be saved, so with one jump, he turns them all to dust and bones. We see that Ren is hanging upside down, and is happy to hear someone come rescue him but his consciousness is suppressed by the evil force that has taken over him. Bai fights his way through and kills them all, but turns to look at them one last time and pays respect to them. He then slams his sword on the ground to stop the waves from hurting him, but Ren tells him to go away, which means he is conscious, so Bai rescues him as he still has the chance to recover. The evil in his body attacks Bai, but he successfully avoids it, but then Ren starts floating in the air, impressed with a strong cultivator like Bai. He retaliates and sends his attacks right back to him, and asks him to leave his body. The city begins to go back to the ground, but Bai throws his sword at it. He then manages to leave and make it out. Wei walks up to him and slaps him, shocking everyone. She confirms that he is not being controlled by a walk-in. He turns to tell Lion that he did not want to harm Ren, so he couldn't save him forcefully. This upsets Lion, but he is comforted by Huanfu. Bai asks Lion if anyone made it out of the city, and he is told about Elder Liu. In a change of scene, we see that Ren is begging the monster to kill him, as he is tied up. But the monster in the cloak tells his plan to attract strong cultivators, and for that he must hurt Ren so that more people come to rescue him. After that, they will end up becoming puppets of the Sheng Dynasty. But the evil man is angry to hear that he can't defeat Bai, so he stabs Ren. However, Lion also feels the pain at the same time. He then visits the elder who pretends to be sick. He asks if he remembers anything, but he only starts to apologize. Just then, Wei and Huangfu's student enter and offer him ginseng soup, but he refuses. However, they forcefully feed it to him, as it is actually a potion which will help him remember everything. Wei then asks Lion how he knew that this man is fake. Just then Lion transforms into Bai and says that he forgot Lion stutters. They start interrogating him, and the man reveals that he is a land immortal, which shocks them all. He then begins to tell the truth about how the prince has captured Ren and their plans to kill the emperor and revive the Sheng dynasty. Meanwhile, the skull mocks the evil in the cloak and calls him out for all the bad things he has done, since they are all just ghosts. It is shown that the ancient city has an army of skeletons, who are under the prince's control. It is revealed that the ancient city is a mansion made by the Wisdom Immortal, who actually is the skull. In a change of scene, Bai and the two girls are done interrogating the fake elder. He calls out for Ling and who appears out of thin air, scaring Wei. She even goes to question his capability, since so many evil ghosts are roaming. He tells Bai to keep her on a leash, so he tries to calm her down. Ling sucks the soul out of the man, but the soul tries to run away. However, it is soon captured by his pouch. 
He then gives Bai a parchment, which is a counter formation against the spatial skill. Later, Bai calls all the sects which includes the Justice League of Cultivators and the Demon Sect, and asks for their cooperation to fight together. The city only appears every three days, so they must come up with a plan soon. He hands out the counter formation to everyone, and then they plan to find the location of the city with the help of Bai's sword. But Huangfu makes him angry saying his sword can't fly. So Bai beats him up, saying he can sense its energy. Everyone wonders where Lion is. Just then a huge figure in a warrior getup emerges from the smoke, and asks Bai to let him save his older brother. The huge figure is Lion. Bai is going around town, putting up posters to stop people from coming out as they will get killed because monsters will haunt today. This time, the ancient city will appear in the Shangshuan kingdom, and this really worries the princess. Just then, the city appears but all the sects, and their strongest cultivators are on guard and ready to attack. The sect leaders instruct their students to set the battle array. Su and her sect plays music as their form of power, while others follow similar measures each specific to their sect. Meanwhile, Ren is sitting on a throne angry at them for ambushing him. So he sends out a red flame, which soon begins to infiltrate the kingdom. The skeleton soldiers emerge from the liquid and spread out. So Yunzi commands everyone to attack, and they follow his orders immediately. An entire army of cultivators begins to kill off every skeleton soldier in their way. Su's command to freeze causes these skeletons to come to a halt, making it easier for others to kill them. The evil souls then begin to fly in but are soon defeated. Bai and Wei watch from the ground, waiting for the prince but he is too composed. So he sends her up to help them. She then hops on her sword and flies away. Lion appears in his giant getup but Bai stops him from going up. Seeing so many of his army killed, the prince in Ren is finally enraged and decides to go out. The cultivators take a huge hit as he grabs them and kills them. Everyone disbands and goes out to help other sects on Yunzi's orders, while he decides to hold off Ren on his own. Just as the prince is about to attack Yunzi, he is stopped by Lion and takes a huge hit. But he gets up and starts to hurt himself as he knows that this is also hurting Lion. The two brothers engage in a battle, attacking one another and taking hits. He even tries to fool him but Lion doesn't fall for it, and continues to fight him. The girls inform Bai that everything is prepared. He hops onto Wei's sword and orders them to prepare the array. Lion is taken aback when he sees Ren's body split in half, but it was only an illusion. Ren breaks his armor and grabs him by the neck, his feet in the air. Lion tries to talk him out of his greed for power, but he doesn't budge. So Lion does the unimaginable as he pierces Ren's chest with his sword, causing his rotten soul to come out. Ren then says farewell to Lion, and asks him to maintain their essence. Lion gets up to fight him as the prince wears his armor. However, the prince is thrown into the wall by a force. He turns to see that it is Bai and Wei, flying on her sword. Bai blabbers so much that she throws him off his sword. As he gets up to talk to Lion, he dodges the prince's attack swiftly. Bai shocks him by asking about the Wisdom Immortal. He dodges every attack with precision, and then uses his energy to attack him. But Bai consistently breaks his armor into pieces, the prince struggles to fight back. His sword breaks, so he uses the one pierced in Ren's chest. The prince figures out the spatial counter formation, which prevents him from teleporting. Just then, Bai steps in and sends him flying with his attack. He breaks the armor once again, causing the prince to come out. It is revealed that the real mansion of Wisdom Immortal is in another place, and the portal to it just opened. So he challenges Bai as he leaves and says that he is waiting for him there. Everyone stares at the portal, terrified. Just then, Bai instructs Yunzi to check it out but he acts up and refuses to go. Instead General Zhang volunteers but he is soon struck with lightning, and is sent to heal. Just then, they are told that the owner of this mansion is immortal. It can even reincarnate the dead and reverse time and space. Bai orders them all to gather at the Kingaming Sword Sect to deploy countermeasures, while he stays and assesses the ancient city with his old friend. Meanwhile, the skull reminds the prince that in reality it is his mansion which the prince occupied. In a change of scene, Bai heads over to Ling, who is supervising all the souls from battle heading to the afterlife and being sent to hell. He knows why Bai is here. He asks the same question for the millionth time, if the Wisdom Immortal can help him reach the Foundation Establishment Realm. But Ling refuses to tell him anything due to a confidentiality policy. Bai continues to beg him and reminds him of all the favors he has done for him. Ling points towards the Space Vortex as it holds the answer to his question. But this makes Bai angry as he reminds him that he cannot enter due to the Thunder attack. However, Ling spills that it may not affect cultivators of his level, and soon disappears, ignoring Bai. 
he and Wei then return to the Kingaming Sword Sect, where everyone is gathered and are briefed about the mansion. All the cultivators request Bai to enter the mansion and kill the prince. He praises Yuzuan for his eloquence, but it turns out that they are motivated due to the treasures hidden in the mansion. But Bai reminds them that they can't just go up. Upon hearing this they are all disappointed. He leaves them all shocked by revealing his plan to explore the mansion tomorrow. They remind him of the thunder attack, but he still wants to try. Just then, Su comes in revealing that some cultivators broke into the mansion last night. An individual cultivator fooled Su's students and was able to break in at the cost of other cultivators, as he was driven by the opportunity to become an immortal. It is then confirmed that the thunder attack will not affect those below the nascent soul realm. Yunzi gets up and urges everyone to hurry up, since he is worried that the sunflower collection may be taken by other cultivators. Bai gives him an angry look, causing him to feel ashamed. So it is then decided that the sects will send in disciples from the Foundation Establishment realm. Wei tells Bai that she will go with him. Later, Bai is desperately praying when Wei interrupts him and asks why he won't let her go. He reminds her that it was her blood that activated the mansion in the first place, so it's not safe for her to go. But she still begs him to go, and he can't help but appreciate her passion. So he allows her to go and tells her he won't find a second disciple with her blood. He then hands her three bamboo sticks infused with his sword's energy, in case of an emergency. She is moved by his care for her and they were having a moment, but then they were interrupted by Jinyao, who brought him tea and snacks. Jinyao informs him that she will accompany him to the mansion and doesn't need her master's permission. Wei then takes her away, so that she stops bothering him. We see that the cultivator from before is captured in the mansion, while the skull mocks the prince for being weak and desperate for Bai's body. So he decides to use the illusion of eight pains in life to defeat Bai once he comes. As they prepare to enter, the space vortex attacks the cultivators and throws them back to the ground. Just then, a smoke shaped as a skull tells Bai to stop playing tricks and come in, so he finally goes up to the mansion. Bai is angry at Huangfu for sending four women instead of strong men. Though he is being he is assured that they are just as powerful disciples, and Jinyao is the best among them in the demon sect. Jinyao acts all cute around Bai. He is left helpless as Su's sect only has women, but she is also sending her best disciple. Su asks him if he is worried that her disciple will seduce him. Just then, Jang's disciple steps forward and tells him to treat her like a man, but that seems impossible. He gives them all time with their masters, so they can see them off. Then the four women prepare themselves to go into the mansion. Wei tells Bai to get on her flying sword, but he refuses and strictly orders them to go first as he has another way to go into the mansion. He then asks Su for a favor, so she plays her instrument which creates waves and allows him to walk up in the sky. Her music intensifies, pushing him inside, and the girls then follow him. The prince sees that they have arrived and gives them a little gift. Suddenly, someone's memories start rolling in front of them, but Bai instructs them to ignore and look ahead. After that, they all pass through another opening, where the landscape is completely different. Bai is about to fall but Jinyao soon catches up, and they all land safely. Wei then reads the writing on the stone which states the eight pains of life. Just then, a portal named the first pain of life birth opens up, and they all enter inside it. Once they step out, they see a garden and pink flowers all around them, with heart-shaped clouds, and birds on trees. All the girls are captivated by the beauty, but Bai realizes something is off, so he asks them to stop breathing the air as it is a psychedelic. But it is too late, he turns around to see all the girls infatuated with him, begging him to be their boyfriend. Then the girls begin to fight one another with the winner being the one to marry Bai. They all get competitive and desperate for him, but he constantly reminds them to breathe out the smoke. However, they pay no attention to what he is saying. Meanwhile, the prince is enjoying the show from his throne. Bai screams to let go of him or else he will punish them. So with one huge breath, he sucks the psychedelic breaking their illusion along with the illusion of the garden. After breaking free, they are still concerned for him and ask if he is okay. But he just farts on their faces, letting out the smoke he just inhaled. So they all cover their noses in disgust, while he tells them that letting it out this way will ensure that he is fine. After that, they all start looking for a way out but suddenly the walls start caving in on them. It is the birth gate that is trapping them together, but one can simply not outsmart Bai. So he throws his sword up causing the walls to stop. They are then sucked into the sky, making the prince angry as they pass this stage. He then throws them into the next illusion by turning a golden button on his throne. Everybody fixes themselves while after landing while Bai wonders where they have been teleported to. He goes up to read the writing on the stone. It says everyone will get old, hence the illusion of aging. So he instructs the girls to not go anywhere, 
but once again, he is too late as he turns to see that all of them have turned into old grandmas, which makes him realize that this mansion has the power to manipulate time. It is shown that while Bai was reading the writing on the stone, the prince cast a spell on the girls turning them old, because he has been watching every move of theirs. At first, they all think it is some sort of light which has uplifted their moods, but then the girls start mocking and laughing at one another. However, reality soon sets in as they all start crying and Bai covers his ears. Wei is even more upset since she is now older than her father, so Bai steps in to comfort her and tells her that her body type is better than her father's, while Su's disciple cries while looking in her pocket mirror, and then she taps on an excessive amount of powder, causing him to cover his face, as she desperately covers her wrinkles. He then moves on to console Jinyao, as she cries about not getting married soon, so he tells her she can always marry an aged man. Moreover, the Braveness sect girl struggles to pick up her weapon, and as a result cracks her waist. Just then, they all get angry at him, scaring him. Meanwhile, the prince enjoys the scene of them all crying and scared, so he twists his golden button again. This causes the light to move from the girls to Bai, and Wei warns him about the light as it is what turned them old. But it is too late, and Bai is standing right under the light, however it has no effect on him, rather it just feels warm. Seeing this makes the girls go crazy. Even the prince is outraged as the wisdom immortal tells him that the eight illusions will not work on Bai, and to get his body he must fight with him directly. Angered by his response, he throws the skull onto the wall causing it to break. Meanwhile, the girls are tired of simply walking, due to their old age. While others are close to giving up, Yanfei crawls towards the exit but she soon falls asleep. But when Bai turns to look back, he sees that all of them have fallen asleep. Left with no choice, he then carries all four of them on his back, and heads towards the exit. They keep on blabbering and teasing him, but he still manages to take them to the next place. He kicks the door open, and they all trip. Soon, they are all back to their young and old self, and are too happy about it. Then they all look around to see that they have entered another beautiful place with flowers and butterflies surrounding them. However, Bai alerts them immediately to gather and protect themselves with their spiritual energy, and so they follow his orders. They read the writing on the stone which tells them that they are in the pain of illness. So they walk on high alert, careful not to breathe but they soon realize that the flowers are absorbing their spiritual energy. So every girl falls sick to a different illness, one by one. So Bai casts a barrier around them, to give them time to restore their spiritual energy, while he goes on to cut off all the poisonous flowers in the garden. However, the flowers bloom back to life again after being cut, causing the barrier to break. Bai once again casts the barrier, and throws his sword to cut the flowers off again. But then he radiates a huge amount of spiritual energy, causing the flowers to be full to a point they all explode. They all then get up to walk out of the illusion. But when Wei asks his level in the Kai refining realm, it is revealed that he is on level 66,660, which shocks them all. The prince is angry to see them pass, once again. The prince is unable to see through, as it is revealed that the wisdom immortal only created the entrance and the exit, and suggested that he should go inside to see for himself. Meanwhile, Bai and the girls are yet again in another vibrant place, but this time they are surrounded by spider lilies which signify death. A flashback shows that they knew before entering Thaw, it is the pain of death they will encounter next. As they are talking, Bai tells them it is the gate to the Hades realm, in the present, he is waiting by the river when he sees a boat approaching them. It is none other than Ling. He then suggests Bai to stay here forever since he came in by himself. But he refuses again, and they all climb onto the boat. They all reach the forgetting bridge, where a pretty young woman can be seen feeding some drink to a kid. The kid then walks up onto the bridge. Yunfei asks about the drink, and it is revealed that it is a special soup made of lifelong tears, which will help them forget the memories of the past. The girls are given the same soup made of unimportant tears, they quickly gulp it down. Meanwhile, Bai is fussing over how he is given a tub of tears instead. So he begs Meng to reduce the amount, but she says she only gave him one when there were so many tubs filled. The girls take a peek inside his tub, and laugh at the different memories shown. Just then, Bai jumps on the cover of his tub to further stop from embarrassing himself. He urges them to cross the bridge, as he will soon follow them. So he dunks his face in his tub, and starts drinking aggressively. While crossing the bridge, the girls pity him and really hope for him to reach the foundation establishment realm. Meanwhile, the prince is pacing back and forth, waiting for them, and the wisdom immortal continues to piss him off with his wisdom, and asks him to be patient. In a change of scene, we see that Bai is bloated on the boat, due to the excessive tears he drank. They then explore the Hades realm, as they even go on to meet Yama, the leader, and Bai also plays a game with him. 
Just then, the prince is finally able to see them walk out of the Hades realm, and is angry to see that they made it out so fast. Bai then grabs all the items from the girls they took from the realm, and gives it back to Ling and tells him to thank Yama. The skull tells the prince that even Yama can't force Bai to stay if he is unwilling. Meanwhile, Bai scolds the girls for taking things from ghosts. Upon hearing their conversation, the prince once again throws the wisdom immortal and aggressively turns his golden button to make the following illusions even more difficult for Bai. Meanwhile, the girls are complaining to Bai about returning their gifts, but ignoring their pleas, he tells them to pay attention since they are in a new place, which looks like a galaxy covered in stars. A crystal-like object turns toward Bai, and reads that they are in the seventh pain which is the pain of obsession. This confuses Bai, as they have suddenly jumped to the seventh pain. Just then, the object starts spinning, making Bai realize that all the pains are mixing up, which are hatred, desire, and obsession. This means that the land immortal is getting desperate. Just when Bai turns around he sees that all the girls are gone, and he calls for them one by one but is met with no response. Suddenly, another crystal object shows him a vision of his master, who is mocking him for not reaching the foundation establishment realm. He is then shown memories of his life, even the ones he doesn't remember, like how his parents abandoned him when he was a baby because they couldn't take care of him. He then turns around to see the Book of Foundation establishment, which finally brings out a reaction from him and shocks him. Elsewhere, Wei is also shown memories of her life where she sees her father doubting her abilities and not seeing her as someone fit. This causes Wei to cry as she is hurt by these memories. All the memories of other girls are showing them their weaknesses, trying to play with their emotions and manipulate them against their loved ones. But all of them are too smart to be fooled this easily. With one swift move they all break these crystal memories with a smirk on their faces. Bai then says that his master couldn't even beat him when he turned into an immortal. He would never look down on him. Bai was also very tempted by the book but he knew it was a trick so he broke that too. Similarly, Yunfei knows her master Zhang is not so narrow-minded and is like a father to her. And just like that, Wei also breaks free knowing that her father loves her and so does everyone else. Bai looks at them proudly, but just then he stops Jinyao's sword as she breaks her illusion too quickly without seeing him standing on the other end. She immediately blushes when he asks who will marry her. Once again, for the millionth time, the prince is enraged seeing that none of them were fooled, as he blames himself for underestimating them, but apparently it is just the beginning. Suddenly, the shards start piling up to turn into a snake, and Bai warns them all to be careful, as he realizes that the prince can't fool us so he has now resorted to physical attacks. Just then, the snake flies around them and stops right in front of them. He stares at them, and finally opens its mouth to shoot shards at them, but Bai quickly acts and casts a barrier around them to prevent them from being pierced. He then quickly uses his tricks to move the barrier ball around, which causes the snake to follow them. However, the shooting shards are so sharp that they cause cracks in the ball, causing it to almost break. Seeing the situation get worse, Bai hands all the girls bamboo slips and instructs them to run in five different directions and to use these bamboo slips as a defense when the snake sticks out its tongue, while Bai will kill him. So they follow his orders, as he counts to three and they all run in different directions, breaking the barrier. This confuses the snake, so he decides to focus on Wei and run after her. But she uses the bamboo slip just in time, and casts a barrier around her. So Bai sees this as an opportunity, and decides to distract the snake. With a few swift moves he slits the snake's body into multiple pieces, and with one last shot to the snake's head, which causes it to burst into tiny million pieces. As Bai steadies himself, while shards are raining around him, a yellow shiny stone falls beside him. So he picks it up to examine it, and it turns out to be a moonstone. Just then, the girls gather around Bai, but the selfish side of him comes out and he tells the girls to summon more inner demons, so that he can get more moonstones, and the girls just look at him with disappointment. We see that the Wisdom Immortal is extremely happy about Bai, the Sword Master as he is not playing by the rules and is giving the Ghost Prince a headache. So the Prince tells him to shut up. We see that Bai actually managed to convince the girls to summon their inner demons, which led to him collecting 1101 gems so far. While the girls are sitting in a circle, he even praises Wei for her hatred, which made a very good quality gem but he is still not satisfied, and asks them to summon even more demons. Hearing this anger's way, as she has even gone as far as to think about bedwitting at the age of 10. All the girls seem in major distress, even Jinyao has run out of hatred and clings on to Bai to hug her as she is suffering from the pain of obsession, but he tries to shake her from his leg. Just then, Yunfei's angry voice brings them all to a halt, as she screams her desire to win first place, 
and this summons another snake. Seeing this makes Bai happy, and he proceeds to kill it. Mei Kao tells Wei to talk to him, and make him stop as they have been summoning demons for a few days now, and have even collected enough gems to build a few more sects. But Wei says she can't help, as greed is the culture of the Kingaming Sword sect. Just then, Jinyao summons another snake while dreaming of Bai, Wei jumps in to save her, but is scratched by the snake and bleeds. However, Yunfei finishes off the snake by chopping off its head, and Jinyao apologizes to Wei. But they are interrupted by Yunfei, as she wonders why the snake didn't turn into a gem. Just then, the head of the snake gains life, and licks the blood causing it to regenerate his body. It grows even bigger in size, and this time his hands even pop out, scaring the girls. But then Wei realizes that maybe it is her Dragon Ball blood that gave the snake so much power. Just then, it starts shooting shards at them, but they are all saved as Bai steps in. He then turns to question who had hid their hatred, and they all point to Jinyao but she clings on to Wei. But he notices a bruise on her arm, and his suspicions are confirmed that it was her blood, which made the snake so big. So he tells the girls to protect Wei, while he kills the snake off. He then climbs onto the snake's body, causing a slit everywhere, and then finally stabbing his head with his sword. He holds on tight, while the head explodes leaving behind thousands of gems. After killing it off, he tells Wei to bandage herself, and gives her an image storing gem to capture the entire space, so that it can later be studied by Yuxuan. Bai then schools the girls for not being able to kill a snake like this, so he tells them to summon some more and they will train in killing them as their devil training begins now. Meanwhile, the prince has been watching all along, and is now intrigued by Wei as he suspects that she is the descendant of the bloodline of the Dragon Ball. He then says to himself that she will die here today. The Wisdom Immortal is now worried because of her presence. Back in the Delight House, Su is catering to a very stressed Hyung Fu, who is worried that it has been months since they have gone in, and wonders if they are playing inside. Since Bai is powerful enough to kill a Land Immortal in minutes, it is worrisome that they are still not back. He questions Bai's ability to protect the disciples, but Su assures him that he can protect tens of thousands of people. Fu falls asleep as he worries about Jinyao dying in that mansion. Just then, a girl comes out from the smoke and informs Su that her father, the Monster King, is dead. Back in the mansion, Wei is tired of holding on to the image storing gem and is now bored. While Bai is training the girls to fight the snake, Mei Kao runs with her instrument in hands fighting for dear life. She turns around to play it in order to kill the snake, but he dodges it and is about to kill her when he is stopped and killed by Bai, just in time, and leaves behind more gems. The girls are exhausted, but he summons another snake, making them wonder how much hatred Bai really has. He instructs them to fight it off, and they all aggressively beat him up, and fail, much to Bai's disappointment. He is frustrated now, as he can't find the exit, and challenges the Land Immortal to come out and fight. Back in the Delight House, the girl tells Sue to take charge as she has the purest bloodline, and this can stop the riots and monsters from taking control over the cities, as they will value her due to her pure bloodline, and she can protect the humans she cares about so much from being attacked. Back at the mansion, the girls are still fighting the snake, Yunfei entangles it, while Mei Kiao plays her instrument to attack, and strangles it with the strings. Just then, Yunfei stabs it, and this angers the snake so it opens its mouth to attack. Jinyao steps in and further ties it down with the strings. She lands the final blow, and more gems are left behind as the snake explodes. They are all proud of working together to kill it off, and so is Wei. She goes up to Bai, and asks him to also allow her to kill the snakes but he sends her back to explore. Just then, he summons another big snake much to everyone's disappointment as they are exhausted, and he names this snake, his first love that failed. As the snake emerges, the girls stare at it in shock as it is huge. Prince has realized that Bai won't let Wei fight, so now he has no choice but to fight them in person. So he leaves behind the cloak, as his red rotten soul enters the portal. Just then, the Wisdom Immortal says that he is waiting for Bai to come. Just when the girls are done killing off the snake, they beg Bai to finally leave as he has collected enough gems, and Wei is also done recording. But suddenly, the Land Immortal emerges, making Bai happy. He sucks in the gems, which now makes Bai angry as they are his hard-earned gems. The smoke then turns into a scary huge demon, and tells them to taste his inner demons, since their own inner demons couldn't kill them. Bai realizes that the prince gathered the power of the four pains to his body. He then tells Bai to give his body, in order to let the others go. But Bai mocks him for always grabbing things from others and being unpopular, which makes him angry, so Bai finally asks him to fight. The demon grows even more powerful, and attacks Bai, 
but every limb that he attacks with is torn into pieces. Bai plays around with him and asks him to not die and give him more gems. He teases him, which makes him angry and runs after him. But Bai soon cuts his arms off as he continues to mock him for being a fake prince which further angers him, as Bai seems to know all his inner demons. He bangs his hand on the ground, thinking he has caught and killed Bai, but when he lifts his hands up he sees him unharmed and smiling. Bai demonstrates immense power as he once again slices the demon into pieces and with the final blow he slices it in half and finishes him off. Bai then orders the girls to gather the gems. Back in the Kingaming Sword sect, the leaders have gathered and are strategizing to fight the monsters, to which Yunzi is against since their sect is poor. Some leaders ask for cooperation from each other, but some disagree and this angers Hunukfu as he emphasizes on how dangerous the situation is. Just then, Su stops them and tells them to wait for Bai, as he will be back soon. But if there is no way left, she will go back to the monster realm. Back in the mansion, Wei picks up a gem, and asks Jinyao to see if it is a first-class spiritual gem, but she assures her that all the stones left behind by the demon are good and better than the ones left behind by the snakes. They all find different types of stones, which have powers infused in them, and Yunfei even finds a stone which has a thunder attack power times thousand, so she sticks them all onto her weapon. Albai is busy chopping off the demon constantly and fishing gems out of him. At this point, even he has given up on his desire to have Bai's body and begins to run away. Bai scolds him, causing him to cry gems which makes him happy, and he forces him to cry even more. Bai gets distracted, as he is told that Su has asked for their help and they must hurry up. Meanwhile, the land immortal disappears and when Bai finally notices it, it is too late as he grabs a hold of Wei, and pulls her down with him. The land immortal challenges Bai to come to rescue Wei. All the girls are also ready to fight, but he tells them to be cautious as it is not that simple. Suddenly, smoke starts covering them from everywhere, and the space starts collapsing, causing everyone to fall into a limbo. They are all thrown into the throne room, and Bai soon catches all the other girls before they abruptly land on the ground. Just as Bai is about to leave, he hears a sound coming from the rubble. He removes the rocks to find the Wisdom Immortal. He offers to make a deal with Bai in order to exchange information about where Wei is, but he must promise to take him out from this place. He tells Bai that the mansion was built using the blood of the Dragon Ball, and Wei is now being used to resurrect a great demon. In a change of scene, we see that Wei is tied up in a secluded place. Suddenly, she wakes up and tries to break free, but then hears the land immortal who tells her that she can't escape. He then tells her the more she tries, the more she will bleed, but she is confident that Bai will come to rescue her, and that the prince will not be able to beat him even after he sucks all of her blood. Bai then heads out to find Wei in the deepest part of the mansion. Just when Bai arrives, a dog-like demon appears. It is revealed that the creature is the skeleton of the great demon, which was awakened with Wei's blood. Then the demon runs after Bai, but he stabs him causing the demon pain, and then slits his head. However, the demon quickly recovers. Bai then tries to find other spots on his body that might be his weak point, so he continues to attack him. Bai swiftly dodges all his attacks and jumps forward to slice its tail in half, but the tail regenerates. The girls are watching the entire scene, worried for Bai and Wei. Bai slices its body into multiple pieces when he finally finds his weak point, but the demon also realizes this and moves to attack Bai with a great amount of energy. However, it has no effect on Bai and this shocks the demon. Bai finally stabs his weak point, causing the demon to disappear into ashes, and the girls cheer on him as they see him succeed. He finally finds Wei tied up, but is warned by the Prince of the Land Immortal that if he tries to cut any connection, she will die as she is now linked to the Prince. The girls are furious and question the Wisdom Immortal on how to kill the Prince, and he says the Prince has tied his three souls to Wei, and the only way to break the connection is if he cuts the connection himself. Back in the Kingaming Sword sect, a man informs Su and other leaders that the mansion is in turmoil and is affecting the Shangshuan kingdom. After hearing this, all the sects rush to stop the mansion and the sky from collapsing. Meanwhile, the prince reveals to Bai that he has to completely drain her blood to revive the mansion of Wisdom Immortal, and that everyone will die. Bai then offers his body to him in exchange for Wei, but she tries to stop him. However, he doesn't listen and challenges him to take his body. Just when he tries to take Bai's body, Bai ends up capturing two of his souls in his hands. He then proceeds to tear his two souls, using an immense amount of power, while his last soul is still connected to Wei. Bai orders Wei to use his bamboo slip, and the moment she does, she screams in pain, which causes an explosion of the spiritual energy. Wei then falls into Bai's arms and asks if she is dead. He assures that Ling is not there and that he has killed the prince. Then he tells her that his bamboo slip protected her. 
He then transports them both back to the girls they praise Bai, and Yunfei even asks him to teach her as his disciple. Bai rushes to the Wisdom Immortal, asking him to teleport them outside. But he refuses and says it is no use in going outside, since Bai destroyed the main brain of the mansion and everything within a hundred mile radius will collapse. This angers Bai, so he commands him to teleport them outside. Meanwhile, all the sects and their leaders are trying their hardest to protect the kingdom and to stop the sky from collapsing. Just then Huang Fu tells Su to leave as he will hold the fort, but she refuses as she knows Bai will be angry. Just then, Bai puts a hand on his shoulder and he turns to hug him out of happiness, but Bai pushes him off. All of them have made it out successfully, and Bai hands the skull to Yunzi, and then instructs everyone to leave. The sky further collapses and everyone rushes out. As soon as everyone has left, Bai accumulates a huge amount of energy and blows it right at the collapsing mansion. He demonstrates an unimaginable amount of power which clears the sky as the mansion disappears into thin air. Everyone watches from afar, with shock on their faces while Bai radiates energy. Just then, the sky clears and everyone cheers him on as he is floating on his sword, and it turns out he has broken through to a new level. A few days later, we see that Wei has finally woken up, and Jin Yao is the first one to greet her, and then explains to her the entire situation of how Bai saved the Shangxuan kingdom from collapsing by absorbing the mansion. Meanwhile, Yunzi and Yuxuan are annoying the Wisdom Immortal with questions. Just then, Bai appears and asks them to leave. He then asks the question he has been dying to ask, whether he can reach the Foundation Establishment realm. And surprisingly the Wisdom Immortal tells him that he can. Upon hearing this, Bai is overjoyed and starts dancing around. After he is done dancing around, he then asks him what he should do to which the skull has no answer. Hearing the skull's response angers Bai. But the skull then asks his current level which is revealed to be 66,666. So he tells Bai that he is an immortal envy with unlimited power and has a boundless energy center. The skull comforts him by telling him that he is invincible and he shouldn't need to reach the foundation establishment realm. The skull also reveals that in ancient murals, a man with his essence perhaps broke through the Kai refining realm, but he doesn't know the method. Bai is still upset, but then the skull tells him he can fight the immortals, since the first man with immortal envy also fought monsters. This catches Bai's attention, and he asks if the monsters would know who he is. The skull replies with a maybe. In a change of scene, we see that Bai is at the Delight House, where Su tells him that he will be her hatchet man. In case someone tries to disobey her, he will beat them up. Upon hearing this, Bai is happy as his ego is boosted, but then he surprises her with a strange request, which is to dig her ancestral grave. In a change of scene, we see the same flower girl from before walking up to someone's throne. She informs the man in the robe that the information is all out there, to which he replies that he cannot wait for his elder sister's arrival. And with that season 1 ends. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified about our new videos.